Welcome to another Narc Survivor Live video. This is one that everyone who has been harmed by a narcissist needs to see right now. Because it is a very important message and it will really help you to understand what you went through with the narcissist. But before I begin, please do hit the thumbs up button down below so that it will help to get this message out there to other survivors who may need to see it as well. And also I am accepting donations through to my PayPal account, which is paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. I appreciate all donations, no matter how small. I've done a lot of work on here, putting out this content for the past five and a half years. So I would really appreciate it if you could give something back in return. It's good to always have that exchange of value going in and out. It gives good karma to us all. When we get something, we receive something and then we give something back in return as well. So again, I appreciate all donations, no matter how small. And you could donate through to my PayPal. It is paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. And also don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click all notifications so that you will be notified when I upload a video in the future. All right, that's the intro. Now on to the message of this video. Everyone harmed by a narcissist needs to see this right now because up until this point, you may have been very confused. You may have been experiencing cognitive dissonance, two conflicting beliefs, where it's like this narcissist came into your life and you're wondering, do they actually want me? Do they want to be with me? What is it that they actually want? Because when they first come into it, they make it seem like they desire in a relationship, or at the very least, a a sexual act, an intimate encounter, whatever it may be, they make it seem like that's what they want. But in all actuality, no, they're not physically attracted to you. They're not sexually attracted to you. That's not even a concern to them at all. And they're not desiring a connection or relationship. It has nothing to do with that when you're dealing with a narcissist. So what is it about? Why do they get involved with you? Why are they around you? What is the point if they're not even really attracted to anyone and it's nothing to do with sex? What it's about is power and control. They decide to have power and control over you. But why you? Why are you so important? Why not someone else? It has to be you because what, what's drawn them to you, what has attracted them to you, is their envy of you their desire. And I know I just said they don't decide to have a connection or a relationship and it's not even anything to do with sex and it's power and control. So what is the desire about? And what that desire is about, as a result of their envy, they are desiring to have a possession ability, quality, or other desirable attribute belonging to you. That's what it all comes down to, and that is the root basis of narcissism. Anyone with MPD, anyone who has narcissistic traits, when they come into you, they're attracted to you, that's all that it is. And I know sometimes, yes, it may look like they care about you, showing you their emotions, they're telling you they're in a relationship, a connection. Or it's like sometimes you can really feel like there's like some sexual desire towards you. All an illusion. It's all an illusion. None of that is even real. It's impossible for a narcissistic person to experience any kind of attraction where it's physical or sexual, or whether they're desiring a relationship. That doesn't make any sense. A relationship is the way in which two people connect, and so is sex. So it is any form of intimacy. It has nothing to do with power or control. So that is how you know that, yes, 
it is in fact all an illusion. It has nothing to do with a mutual exchange or any form of reciprocation, where it's like they're giving something out and you give something back, or you're giving something out and they give something back. It's got nothing to do with that at all. It's one-sided. It's just you giving something to them and what are you giving? You're giving them what they desire. What they desire is the narcissistic supply, your attention, validation and admiration, praise and compliments from you to validate their false self. And at the same time, they are reconstructing their false self, which is a concoction of whatever they like in different people, past sources of supply, celebrities, whatever else it may be. And as they go from person to person, they are taking bits and pieces of that person and adding them to this false character. Whatever they deem to be desirable and attractive, or that might make them powerful or feel important. Whatever they think might make them look good to other people. So they're getting around you and they're taking your qualities, your abilities, they're mimicking them. They may even steal your possessions, your money, your resources. They may even, through divorce, alimony, try to take your house, your car. Before you know it, they're living in your home with someone else. They're driving around in your car, pretending like they're you. They may even try to take your kids away from you, especially if they look like you. Because remember, again, that's a piece of you. And that's all that it really gives. It's an exchange of energy. They want your energy. They want to be a part of you. Or rather, they, they want a part of you in them. Which they get from that energy transfer. And as we know, everything is energy. It doesn't matter what it is. Whether it's physical, emotional, whatever it is, it is still energy. Whatever they get from you, whether it's mimicking your qualities, copying your mannerisms, copying the way you speak, the way you walk, just the way you behave in general, your likes and interests. And that's the thing as well, because with you, you actually like things for real. You're actually really interested in it because it vibes with you. You're drawn to it, it makes you feel something, it resonates with you. As for them, it's all about their false character. It's all about whatever makes them look good to other people so that they can see themselves and feel about themselves however they want to. So they're just looking around constantly and it's like, who's going to evoke my envy right now? This lustful feeling of desire where they want something from you. And then they can take it and then add it to this false self because they're constantly taking bits and pieces from other people. Because they never feel like it's enough. They always want more. Remember, it's the ego, the egotistical. It's very greedy. It's very selfish. And they may see things in you that are even really interested in it at all. So it's not something where it's like they were already into a certain type of music or a certain hobby or interest, whatever it may be, playing a musical instrument, watching a certain movie, reading a certain book. They weren't already into that. So it really had nothing to do with them at all. It was nothing to do with their identity. It's not just something where they just willingly engaged in that before they saw someone else do it. It's just because they saw that you're involved in it. And that made it seem appealing to them because maybe it got you some attention. Maybe they thought it made you look good. It made you look attractive, desirable, whatever it may be. So then they thought, I got to hop on that. I got to make this a part of myself, even though all the while they're not really even interested in it at all. And that's how you know it's all completely fake. It's a false character. It's not even real because they're not really into it at all. It's just something they've taken from you. Like I said, it's all based on their desire. They decide to have a quality, possession, or other desirable attribute belong to you. And when it comes down to things that are like your interests, hobbies, wherever it may be, that really comes down to your qualities. These are certain qualities that you possess. 
like a certain quality of you maybe that you enjoy watching a certain movie or reading a certain book listening to a certain type of music or maybe you like painting maybe you like surfing these are hobbies of yours but they're also like qualities maybe abilities that you have and they want to steal that for their own and I, like that's who they are remember when they came to you in the beginning they came to you with these what seemed to be their qualities but then when it came down to it they weren't actually any good at it they didn't even know what they were doing because these are just qualities they stole from someone else before you and they made that a part of them but there's no desire no passion no motivation behind it to actually be that for real this is all just on the surface it's a deceptive appearance to mislead you to manipulate you into thinking that there's something that they're not so that they can see themselves in the way that they want to and feel about themselves however they choose to and you're just a vessel a means for them to attain that but they're not really about that at all for real crazy as it sounds this is actually how it is and I know I've spoken about it before but I really want to drill it home in this one because many of you need to know you need to understand this very important point because this is if you don't understand this you don't really understand anything about narcissism anyone with narcissistic traits the whole point is they're seeking power and control. They're very jealous, possessive and controlling. The root of it is envy. So they're not desiring a connection or a relationship. That's why it's like they never even sit down and have a conversation with you. They never even try to get to know you. From the very beginning, it's like they've got you all figured out. They already know everything they need to know. And even with sexual attraction, they're not really sexually attracted to anyone. It's all just a means to gain power and control. It's not how you may be thinking where it's like, they're looking at you like with lust or that they sexually desire you. It's got nothing to do with that. They don't even see people in that way. They don't even look at you like that you're just an object. They don't, they don't even view you as a person. They don't even view themselves as a person. It's just an object. It's like a meat suit. And they want it to be under their control like a puppet on a string. But many of you, you glorify, you idealize these narcissists and you assume that their experiences are similar to yours. When it comes to connection, relationships, sexual attraction, But by doing that and assuming that, you're really not understanding how their mind works at all. Because they do not think that way. It's all about power and control. I mean, that would be the same as saying, to say that they appreciate a sexual engagement, connection, I mean, that's like saying that they actually appreciate your qualities your abilities, your possessions. If they appreciated any of those things, they would have respected it from its source. They wouldn't have harmed it. They didn't appreciate any of that in you. They don't appreciate your qualities, your possessions. They don't appreciate you sexually, none of that. And that's how later on in the relationship, it's so easy for them to withhold from you sexually because they never wanted that anyway it was just a means to gain power and control and then later on in the relationship it's like they're going to gain more power and control by not doing that with you because they've got you emotionally attached so now they know that you want it and you got to think if someone really wants that how can they just switch it off 
on and off whenever they want to. This is how you know. If they really appreciated all of these things about you, they would have respected the source of it. But they don't, it's just like, they just wanted to steal it. Your identity, everything that makes you you. And they wanted to make it a part of them. And it really reminds me of this um, really great film. It's a classic, classic horror movie. I think it came out back in 2004. Don't know if any of you know it. I know I'm talking a lot about movies now in my recent videos. But yeah, it's called uh, Jeepers Creepers. It's a horror movie. I can't remember the name of the actors, really good actors. And it's basically this, um, this monster, this beast. It's like a devil with wings and um, it, it needs to feed for it to stay alive. It doesn't need to feed often though. I think it's something like every 23 years, it like wakes up and then it seeks human beings and it captures them. And then it, um, in order for it to survive, it eats certain parts of the human beings. And that could be something like it, it will eat their eyes, their tongue, whatever it is. And it's like it, it sees these um, certain like the body parts and maybe the qualities of a person as well. And it just um, captures the humans and then it wants to consume them. Not be just because it's hungry, but because it, it wants those people to become a part of it. And also like a trophy as though it's like an achievement. Then the remains of the bodies, the... Uh, I can't remember what it's called, the creep or whatever the name of this devil, this monster is. It then takes the remains of the humans back to its cave. Funny enough, it's like the underground of a church. And then it, it stitches the people together and makes a quilt, which like covers the ceiling of its cave where it sleeps, which is kind of like, uh, that's like a trophy, like an achievement of all of the people that it's managed to conquer and uh, consume and make a part of itself. And I'm referencing this movie because it just reminds me of narcissism. It's very familiar to what I've experienced. Because I mean, that's literally what they're doing. They don't care about us just like that demon, that beast. There's no connection, no, no emotional attachment. We're literally just objects. And they wanna have power and control over us just so they can steal these bits and pieces of us. Maybe not physically, although with some narcissists, psychopaths, they do become serial killers. They like to chop up body parts and some of them even become cannibals in extreme cases. But with like COVID narcissists in particular, it's more about the mind. And it may also be qualities that they mimic and stealing our possessions. They want bits and pieces of us to become a part of them. And why do they do that? Of course, it's because they don't feel complete on their own. They feel like they're not good enough as they are. And it's a big difference between someone who, like two people coming together where it's like, they desire a connection, a relationship. That's different because in that there's an emotional investment, an emotional connection. And it's like someone you're genuinely interested in and getting to know them. It's like two separate people coming together. 
with a narcissist, they've got like no identity of their own and they're hungry, like looking at you, bits of pieces of you to complete them. So there's a big difference there. And with narcissists, there's no remorse. There's no emotional investment, no emotional attachment. There's just no investment from them at all. It's literally just their envy, this desire to have something that belongs to you. Whether it's your qualities, your mannerisms, the way you talk, the way you walk, whatever it may be. And this may leave some of you confused. Some of you empaths may even questioning if you're the narcissist, because it's like, well, hold on, because by the end of the relationship, I felt like I was becoming more like them. Because that's the thing. That will happen as well. Because what they're doing, when they're taking bits and pieces from you, they also have to dump parts of themselves into you. Every time they take something from you, there is an exchange. There's always an exchange of something. In any interaction, I've said this before, any interaction you have, you will never remain the same. It's either, either going to raise you up or bring you down. You're never gonna sing following an interaction or engagement. So what happens is when you're interacting with them as you're having relationships, is they're stealing these bits and pieces of you that they like about you. And then they are projecting the negative parts of themselves and assigning that to you. To where it then changes your identity over time. And another thing they may do as well is not just with them, but also they will triangulate you and compare you with other people <coughs> so that you begin to take on someone else's ident identity, whether it's someone they know or a celebrity. They might just say something like, they don't like the color of your hair. And then they might compare you to a celebrity like Beyonce, they might say, why is your hair black? It, it, it looks way better blonde. Just like a Beyonce. Why can't you be more like her? And then you start to feel insecure about yourself. And then you decide to dye your hair. So you start changing yourself to appeal to what you think the narcissist wants, when actually they don't have the attraction they don't have that sexual desire. It's more just about power and control. That's how they're able to change you into something completely different to what you were. And then by the end of it, they lose attraction for you because they were never attracted to you anyway. That was just an illusion. They were never interested in you like that anyway. That's how they can change you. Because here's the thing, if they were really attracted to you, why would they want you to change? If anything, they would want you to stay the same as you were from the very beginning. From when they first met you. That's usually how it is. Like I know myself when I have relationships, when I meet someone, that's who I'm attracted to. So if they just suddenly switch up, I may lose attraction for them. Or if anything, of course, we all want to improve or be better. Nothing wrong with that. But if it's something different, then it may cause you to lose attraction for them. But with narcissists, they're all about just changing you completely from who you were in the beginning. Because they never felt attracted to you specifically. It's more just them desiring to have your qualities, possessions or other desirable attributes. They just want to make that a part of them because they feel like they're not good enough on their own. They're not complete. And then they want to project these negative things about themselves and assign them to you and get you to own that and make it a part of your identity. Because they're still them at their core. Remember this false character. This is just 
on the outside, on the surface, that's not really who they are. They wear different masks, whatever they think is going to appeal to whoever they're dealing with. And they will tailor make these characters to different people. So you may have been involved with them and then they went and met someone else and it looks like they've changed. They've become a different person. Maybe they dyed their hair. They've got a different uh, style of clothes. Maybe they have a different interest now. They're doing different things. And you may be wondering, where was this person when they were with you? But actually all it is, they just tailor made a character for someone else. Now they're wearing a different mask. And underneath that mask is the exact same person that you were with at the core. That's still them. They've been the same way since they were children. And they're gonna be that way until the day they die. They're always gonna be that childish, emotionally immature, bitter, resentful, grudge holding person. That's always gonna be them. Doesn't matter what they stole from someone before you, doesn't matter what they steal from you, they're always gonna be that same person. And that's never gonna change. It's not like with us, where we heal, develop and grow, and we become better. And it's not just on the surface, it's not just like this deceptive appearance, this is really at our core. We actually change ourselves from within at a deep level, but they can't do that. Everything they take from us or from anyone else is just part of the mask, it's part of the facade, this deceptive outward appearance. And you may ask, how do we know that this is true? How can I prove this to you right now that it isn't actually who they are when they steal these bits and pieces from you or someone else? The proof is that they can't sustain it. Whatever they took from you, it's not going to last. They need people to validate it, to reflect it back to them. If there's no one there to reflect it back, it goes away. So whatever they stole from you, the news source has to be able to validate that. It has to appeal to them as well, otherwise they'll just discard it and become something else completely. It's just whatever they think makes them look good so that they can feel good about themselves and believe that they are worthy and that they're good enough. That's all that it is. And that's typically why they, because of their disorder, they can't experience long-term success. It's not possible. Unless they have tons of enablers or flying monkeys, maybe then that can help, it can delay their failure a bit, but it's not gonna be long-term success. And that's the thing, that's how they set themselves up for failure. They really just sabotage themselves. They're self-destructive. Because with you, your qualities, your abilities, your possessions, everything that you had that made you you, it came from your core. You generated that from within, and they tried to destroy that in you, they stole it from you. Because that came from you, you can sustain it. You can sustain it for the rest of your life. But they can't because it's not real. It's fake, it's just, it's on the surface, it's a mask, it's what they stole from you. So they haven't done the work, they haven't gone through the trenches, they haven't gone through the trials and tribulations to develop that identity and to become that for real. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like someone who wants a certain job and it's like they've got no qualifications, no experience. They just want it because of the payout. Of course, they're not gonna be very good at that job. 
they're not going to do well, they're not going to be able to sustain that position, they're going to end up getting fired because they haven't got the qualifications or the experience. It's just something where maybe it, it looks good to them, like the idea of them being maybe a doctor, an accountant, whatever it may be, they like the idea of that position for their image. It might make them look good to their family and friends but they're not qualified, they're not experienced, and it's not something they're really passionate about, that they're interested in, so it's not real. So they're not gonna be able to sustain it. Same thing with you and the narcissist. They weren't really, I mean, they're not really attracted to anyone. They're not really sexually attracted to anyone. They're not passionate or enthusiastic. It's not real, it's just for power and control. That's how they have so many short-term relationships. Nothing ever lasts for long. Or even if they do get married with someone and they deliberately get them pregnant or get pregnant by them. It's just for power and control. They're not really about it. It's just to keep that person trapped so that they can continue getting what they want from them. And when you're around a narcissist, you will feel trapped because they're constantly taking and taking everything you got. Everything that they want from you to complete them or that they think will make them feel complete. And it might in that moment, but it won't last for long. And that's why whenever you're around a narcissist, it's like you just want to hide in a corner. You just want to lay in bed and pull the covers over you so that they can't see you or just cover your eyes and your ears because they are constantly having to take from you. It's the only way that they can survive because they abandoned their true selves a long time ago. They have no true identity. All they've got is a false character and they've got to take bits and pieces from other people who they desire, who they desire certain qualities or whatever it may be from. And that's why you just you got to roll into a ball when you're around them. It's like your body language will be withdrawn. You don't feel like you can walk around confident with your head held high because they're constantly having to put you down. And that's kind of it as well, because when they're putting you down and they're targeting your self-esteem, that's out of envy and that's when they're taken from you as well. And they're projecting these disowned parts of themselves and assigning them to you of how they really are and at their core they're very insecure they're not happy with themselves This is how after a certain amount of time they typically end up getting exposed to the enablers and flying monkeys, even though they may still continue with the illusion, but everyone knows deep down, I mean, they're not completely stupid. They can see, they do get it. They do understand a lot of times what's really going on because you've just got to look at a person's life and their patterns of behavior they can't really sustain anything to reveal that they're not really passionate about or interested in anything I mean there's really only three things that a narcissist is interested in and that's money power and control and even the money they're not really interested in the actual money itself it's just the money to as a means of power and control just as with their own physical appearance with a somatic narcissist or intelligence with cerebral narcissists. It's not the intelligence or their body or their physical appearance. That's not what concerns them. It's more the power and control. It's the same thing when they target you and they try to make you feel stupid as though you lack intelligence or you're uneducated or they try to make you feel bad about yourself as though you're not attractive enough, whatever it may be. All of that is just down to power and control. 
It's got nothing to do with attraction. It's got nothing to do with you not being intelligent enough or you not possessing certain knowledge or experience. It's got nothing to do with that. They don't care about any of that. It's all a false image. The intelligence, the physical appearance, the money, the qualities that they steal from people. Everything is just a false image. They don't care about any of these things. And that's why a narcissist could have mansions around the world, supercars, super yachts, private jets. And they're not happy with any of it because they don't care about any of that. And after a certain amount of time when people have seen them with all of this stuff, it's like, all right, you've seen them with having mansions, cars, everything. For 10 years, 20 years, it gets boring after a while. It's like, yeah, okay, we already know that's what you have, what you're about. So they no longer maintain that power and control because after a while it gets boring. It's like you, you can only see a person's house, a person's face, a person's body, a person's car so many times until you just get bored of it. Until it no longer has an effect on anyone and then they can't maintain that power or control. This is why it's so important to have substance. And that's why with myself, when I first started on this channel, I didn't really want anyone to see me. Not because I'm not happy with how I look. I mean, I am quite satisfied with my own appearance. But it's more about having that substance. I mean, that's what I really wanted to be ingrained into this channel. Because all of these other things, all of these superficial things, it gets old. It dies with time. It really does. And it's not just, as some people might think, it's not just like only when the money runs out, or only when you get old and you lose your looks. It's well before that. People just get tired of seeing the same things, the same expensive cars, the same flashy lifestyle, the same face, the same body. It just gets bored after a while and everything just looks the same. But that substance, that true passion and enthusiasm, that never dies. That never gets old. It never does. And if you have that, you can appreciate anything in life. When you're progressing and you're working towards things and you're achieving them, then you can appreciate things when you're grounded from within and you're being yourself. Then everything means so much more to you. This is why narcissists can't be happy with anything in their lives. Because they already know that they're frauds, they're con artists. The cheaters, the liars, the manipulators. So because of that shame, it plays on their conscience, especially subconsciously. It's always there in their minds and it prevents them from being able to enjoy anything. Many of them can't even sleep at night. And that's really the most valuable thing in this world. And I know that having that myself, knowing that I never really tried to cheat anyone. Or if I did, I always tried to make amends. I always tried to go back and compensate for that. And that's why I don't have a guilty conscience. There's nothing that plays on my mind. I don't have to worry about any shame. Other than, of course, the shame that's constantly projected onto me by narcissists. But even then, I know how to, how to deal with that. But well, that's really where my energy, my enthusiasm, my happiness comes from. It's not from this community, although that does help as well. I mean, of course I feel good knowing that I'm helping so many people and I'm pro progressing and advancing in my studies and my research. But it's really just from my core knowing that I'm trying to do good, I'm trying to do right, and I'm not pretending to be something I'm not. I'm not putting on an act. I mean, of course, researching this now for six years, making videos for five and a half years, 
getting on here doing live videos, sometimes for over an hour every day. To do this, there has to be some real passion, some real enthusiasm. That's coming from my core. It's not just about trying to look a certain way so that I can feel a certain way about myself. Although, at the same time, yes, that can be a part of it. I mean, everyone likes a little bit of validation too. I mean, of course, we, we want to appear as attractive, intelligent, that's normal. We want to be accepted. That's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But the most important thing is to have that self-validation. Because what are you going to do if certain people no longer validate you or if they're no longer there? Then it all falls apart. But with me, I've always had that self-validation even when I had nothing. I still have the ability to be happy. Even before I began this channel. But then that does help as well to have that purpose where you're actually wor working towards something for real that you're really passionate about. That passion, that purpose, that meaning, that sense of direction towards something good and for the benefit of humanity and the world that we live in that will bring you happiness as well. Because of course I have spoken about it before, before I found my purpose and I began this channel. I was going through a dark time myself where I was drinking alcohol every week, smoking weed, playing video games all night. And I didn't have such a clean diet. I wasn't a vegan back then. And of course, I was in a relationship with this girl back then for four years. And when we met, she was a virgin. I was also her first kiss as well. So it meant a lot to me. To me, it was really special. I didn't realize she ended up, I found out she was narcissistic. And then she changed on me very quickly. But of course, this girl was my world. She was everything. Because I had no purpose. I had no other meaning to my life outside of that relationship. So when that relationship ended, I felt like my life was over. I didn't know what I was going to do. So then I went and tried to take my own life. I overdosed on tablets. Luckily, I'm still here. I survived. But yeah, I've spoken about this before. And even after that, as I was trying to recover from it, and I experienced intense withdrawal symptoms from that overdose, which lasted for several months. I was then drinking alcohol every week, smoking weed, playing video games. I even got my cat then as well, Nala, for emotional support, just doing anything I can to try and move on from this narcissistic relationship. And I mean, you know, just to go through a narcissistic relationship that lasted four years and then to be discarded, that in itself is bad enough. But then also what made it so special and made it feel so real to me is how she shared her first kiss with me and she was a virgin. And in my mind, well, not just in my mind, as I communicated with her as well, I was thinking, marriage, children, we're going to be together for life, live together. Of course, that never became a reality. And I was left on my own, I was suicidal. And I went through a lot during that time until I then found out about narcissism through Sam Vaknin. I watched one of his videos on YouTube. Initially, I just searched about energy vampires. And then that's how I found my purpose. I knew this is what I was born to do. I was born to be this coach 
the narcissist, the expert, this relationship expert. And I know that I was born to do this because I have so much passion, so much enthusiasm in this, where I'm just so driven by helping people overcome toxic relationships, people who do not deserve to be abused, and just helping you to understand what you went through, to move on and recover from it, and hopefully to find a healthy relationship for you. So of course, yes, I know that this is my purpose. This is my mission. This is what I was born to do. But that's another thing as well. When you do find your purpose, if you're with a narcissist, they will try and steal that from you as well. Your God-given purpose. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I'm seeing only 34 thumbs ups and 183 live viewers. So if you find it helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. It helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. So we can get this message out there to other people who have been harmed or who are being harmed by narcissists. I'm sure they could use this information as well. It will be very helpful, very comforting for them. So please hit that thumbs up button down below. It will take you two seconds. And also remember, this is not only my purpose, but this is my full-time job, which I do every day. So if you'd like to show your support to this community and to help me so that I can continue doing this every day, making these videos, then you can go to my PayPal, which is paypal.me slash narcsurvivor to make a de donation there, no matter how small. No matter how small the donation, it helps to contribute to this community, to my mission, my purpose in researching about this disorder and giving you this information. As you can see, I know a lot about it. I've been studying it for a long time. And not just so I can understand it in my own life, and because I'm also quite fascinated by this disorder and how this happens to people, but also because of my empathy, my compassion, I do have this core desire to wanna to give this message to you as well, to give you this information so that I can help you and allow you to begin on this journey to becoming the best version of yourself and living your best life. So yeah, it helps a lot. Any donations, no matter how small, just go to my PayPal. It is paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. Of course, as you know, I'm constantly going through smear campaigns, gang stalking. So things aren't how they used to be, where well, I was doing a lot better back then. And unfortunately, I know it doesn't really line up with my self-image on YouTube, having almost 180,000 subscribers, 50 million views, six years of work. But this is another thing, this is how it goes with narcissists as well. Because you could have a, a, a lifelong job that you've been doing, your work, things that you have worked towards in your hobbies, your interests, all of these things that have made you and contributed to your self-image. And then at the same time, it's like it doesn't look that way on the outside. And it's really sad, but this is how it is a lot of times. It's that, it's kind of the opposite with narcissists. It's how their work 
or rather their image and the way that they present themselves, it really doesn't line up with who they actually are and the work that they put in because they've just kind of decided one day that this is who they want to be and they just steal your qualities, your possessions or people before you and they act like that's who they are but that's really not them at all. It's just whatever they think makes them look good, whatever makes them feel good about themselves. Well, as for us, it's more the opposite. It's like we put in all this work and we go through much in our lives to become the people that we are today. We go through all the suffering, all the trials and tribulations. And yet at the same time, our self-image doesn't align with everything we did with everything that we achieved. And that can, of course, affect our self-esteem and make us feel like we're not who we say we are. And then, of course, these narcissists, they get this, um, this fake confidence, well, really it's arrogance, based on what they've taken from you where it makes them feel like they're so much greater than what they actually are. And it's kind of funny when you think about it and it's how you know that they're envious and jealous of you. Because it's like, well, you got the, the qualities, the possessions, the desirable attributes. While well, you've got it, then it isn't that great. Then they're putting you down, they're minimizing it, they're making you feel small. But then once they've stolen that from you, then they exaggerate it. I know they're like the best thing since sliced bread because they're mimicking you, they're acting like you, they've stolen from you. So that's how you know that they're really lying to you and that they see you as so much greater than what you may believe or what they've led you to believe. But of course, they're never gonna come out and tell you this for the simple fact that it's you and not them. I mean, honestly, if they could just, I know this is going to sound silly, but I'm just thinking about it now. <laughs> and this is probably, I mean, actually, yes, this is exactly what it would be like. And I know it would be like this. And it's funny, but let's just add a little joke to this video. Give you something to laugh about. The way they downplay you. You know, they're secretly envious and jealous of you and they mimic you and they go off acting like you with someone else to impress them so they can feel good about themselves. Because deep down they feel like they're nothing, they're not good enough. While they may be playing you down to your face and minimizing you, making you feel like you're not good enough while they're taking all these things from you. Just imagine if it was like that, um, What's that movie called? I, th I think it's um, 13 going on 30 or something. Where it's like this, um, this woman and her daughter switch bodies. Just imagine that happens with you and the narcissist. And then they could jump into your skin. They could move around like you. And I don't know, they could just go out to be you. And they could just go and talk to people in the way that you do, communicate effectively, have your intelligence, your physical attractiveness, your beauty, your style, your mental abilities, your physical abilities, the ability to attract people, charm them. Maybe your abilities in sports. Just all of these things that come together as a package of them being you. Where it's like in that movie, they could just switch bodies with you. All the while they're like playing you down. But if they could just switch with you, and especially if you didn't know about it, can you imagine them? They would just be going about the world. I bet they'd be looking in the mirror, they'd be like, Oh yeah, I'm you. And they'd probably be like singing in the mirror, dancing, like having a great time. 
And then it's like, those of you, I'm sure you've, you've worked hard all your life. Maybe you, you've got a nice home. They'll be waking up in your house, in your beds. They're like waking up like, yeah. <laughs> Watching the TV. And then they get the car keys, jump in the car. Pretending they're you, driving around, going to work, talking to everyone. They would love it. Of course, they would love it if they could do that. Because when you look at it, it's like, they quite clearly want your energy. They want everything about you. They envy you. Honestly, I think they don't just want to take your qualities and your mannerisms and act like you and steal your money, your resources. I think it's more than just that. They literally want to be you. If they had the opportunity to switch bodies with you and live your life, I'm sure they would just do that. And do you know how I know that? Because statistics show on average, a victim gets hoovered by a narcissist seven times before it's finally all over. So what are they doing if they've, they've already got your energy, they've stolen bits and pieces of you, maybe your money, possessions, resources, whatever it is, and then they've left you, they've gone off with this new part of their character. So what's the reason to keep coming back? Why do they need to keep coming back to you if they've already got that? Because it's not just that that they want, they actually want to be you. And many of you can't even see it because they've targeted your self-esteem, they've minimized you. You've got to start looking in the mirror more often. You've got to start looking at yourself. Many of you, you look so youthful, you're glowing, you're taking good care of yourself. You look good and just the way that you present yourself, the way that you conduct yourself in this world when you talk to people, when you communicate and your work ethics, your kindness, your compassion, all of these beautiful qualities that you have. You need to remind yourself of these things every day it's just the way that you do it, the way that you move through life. It's like you don't even realize just how great you are, just how great you look. I mean, I gotta remind you that narcissists typically do target confident people, people who know who they are, people who like themselves people who have a lot of good things going for them. People who are hardworking, successful. Narcissists do not target losers. They do not want to be around bums. That is a myth. They want to be around the best of the best. People who they perceive as being greater than them. They do not want to be around anyone who they think is less than them. Remember, they have this superiority God complex. When they do actually see people who are beneath them, it disgusts them, it makes them sick. They want nothing to do with them. Just look at it like when you go to a restaurant, how they treat the waiter. There's so much disrespect. That's how they really act and how they, how they think about people who really are in their minds beneath them. They're not trying to get around them all of the time and mimic them, steal their qualities. Why would they do that? If they already think that they're greater than you, that doesn't make any sense. They're taken from you because they see you as being greater than them. That's the whole point. And that's why you can never connect to them. You can never have a relationship. There's never gonna be any sexual attraction because, and this is another thing as well, because with a lot of these movies these days, like Fifty Shades of Grey, um, 
it's making it look like sexual attraction, sexual desire, lust, all of these things. It's like there's where where there's a, a power imbalance. When, where one person is like superior, <clears throat> where they're like in a position of power. And they're dominating and controlling the other person. Again, that's not sexual attraction. That's not even lust. That's not sexual desire. Sexual desire, sexual attraction. This takes place where there is an equal balance of power. Where there's stability. It does not take place in instability. There may be respect there, but there's not going to be love. There's not going to be that attraction. You may feel like it's like chemistry, but it's not real chemistry at all. That actually just comes from a childhood trauma. And I know it may, it may feel good. It may feel like adrenaline, but it's actually not good at all. That's not healthy. Real love, real attraction, it's when you're on the same level. They're not trying to dominate you, they're not trying to gain power over you. That's when you will experience real love, real attraction. When it's just two people who are both being vulnerable. If it's just one person who's vulnerable, and then the other person is trying to gain power over them, it doesn't work that way. And remember that's a myth as well. Narcissists aren't typically targeting vulnerable people. They're targeting strong, confident people and then trying to make them vulnerable. There's a difference. Because when a narcissist actually comes across a vulnerable person for real, they just see it as though they're greater than them. They just think they're stupid, like what a joke. They just make a mockery out of it. They're not drawn to people like that. The only time that they might be is when they have no other options. If it's like someone who, they might be mentally unstable. There might be something wrong with them, maybe even a physical disability. If they have no other options whatsoever that they might target that type of person just to establish a position of control. So then at least then they've got some source of supply that's not gonna be able to get away so easily. So it's only in those situations, but other than that, they are looking for confident, self-sustaining people. Because remember, they want that consistent source of supply. They want something reliable, something that they can depend on, something that's not gonna break so easily. I mean, what's the point if they target someone vulnerable? Someone who lacks confidence, that type of person isn't gonna last long. They want you to fight against them. Where it's like they're trying to bring you down and it's like, it's like they're trying to hold the ball under water and it keeps coming back up. Although that may seem like a struggle, that's exactly what they want. Yes, they want you to keep coming back. They don't want you to lay down because otherwise that's no good for them. They're just gonna discard you and then they have to start again. So it is actually that specific quality that you possess, that's what they're looking for. Not just your confidence, your strength, but also your resilience to where you just never give up. Sometimes it may seem like they want you to be hopeless that's only when they plan on discarding you, leaving you behind. And if they've got someone else in their sights to replace you. Otherwise, although it may look like they're keeping you down, or they want you to stay down, they do actually love it when you come back up again. Because then that gives them the opportunity to push you back down and to take more from you.
This is why they often target chosen ones and empaths. Because you've got that resilience. You just keep coming back, you never give up. I mean, other people that may have targeted, may have developed all kinds of mental illnesses by now. They may have already taken themselves out, committed suicide. They may have been completely broke, homeless, in a mental institution. Maybe they would have reacted, tried to kill the narcissist, ended up in jail. All of these things may have happened with someone who's not as strong as you. Someone who's not as confident. Someone who doesn't believe in themselves. Someone who doesn't have that resilience. <clears throat> this is why they picked you. Because they knew you weren't gonna give up that easily. They could see that you've got it. Where someone else, they would have snapped so easily. Right at the beginning. If the narcissist even just insulted them because someone else might have been so weak. They may have responded to that insult by just punching them in the face. And then it would have been all over. Even if they could have got that person in trouble and got them locked up, they still would have lost that source of supply. So they're looking for that. They're looking for someone who's going to be hopeful no matter what. Someone who's got that resilience. Someone who's going to never, never give up, keep fighting back. They're looking for that in a target. And if you look around at this world today, it's pretty rare to find someone like that. Most people are always moping around, sulking, feeling sorry for themselves, playing the victim. They don't want to be around someone like that. I mean, just try that. Just try playing the victim around a narcissist. Try feeling sorry for yourself. Or if you're sick, watch what happens. They'll just ignore you. They'll run away. They'll try to replace you. They'll try to find someone else. They don't want to be around someone like that. They don't like it. They want to be around someone who never gets sick, never gives up keeps fighting back Yeah, everyone who has been harmed by a narcissist, they need to watch this, they need, be, need to be aware of it. That's why you've got to give this video a thumbs up to help get this message out there so that other people will see it as well. And we can prevent people from experiencing further harm from narcissists. Because they're not interested in a connection they're not interested in relationships. They don't experience sexual attraction, sexual desire. They don't experience any of that. All they're looking for is power and control. They view you as an object that exists to serve them. So of course they want to gain power over you so that you can continue to supply them and to prevent you from getting away. They view you as an extension of themselves. And you will feel it to where it's like there's no boundaries. You don't know where you end or they begin or where they end and you begin. Everything's just together, everything's enmeshed. And they have this entitlement to your life, to your possessions, to whatever they want from you. Because they don't want any separation there. They don't want any boundaries because that's just standing in the way of what they want. And what they want is you. They want to be you. And I'll admit, when I first started researching this, and I first started making these videos, this was one of the last things that I wanted to accept. I didn't want to think that it was that simple. But sadly, this is actually how it is. As pathetic as it sounds, yes, they actually want to be you. 
but they don't just want to be you, they want to be other people as well. And that's why I said this concoction, they steal bits and, pe bits and pieces of people and put it together to construct whatever they deem to be desirable and attractive. This fake image. This is why you've got to be very careful when you're around them. Whenever you're around narcissists, because you should know they are envious. The root of their disorder is envy. So you've got to protect yourself, you've got to hold on to your stuff. Because if they're coming around you, guaranteed it's because they want something from you. And it's not like where it's, um, you know, you see someone who's physically attractive, they look good, they work hard, it looks like they got their life together, but then you've got your life together as well, or you're working towards something, you've got something of value in your life, and you're looking at it like, this person isn't like most people, they've got things sorted out, maybe we can build something together because we both live stable lives, we can both take care of ourselves, we're both self-sustaining. It's not like that at all. What you're dealing with is a leech, a parasite, a bottom feeder, someone who's not even meant to be on this earth. They're not even meant to survive. They have to live off other people. They're not even, they're not, they're not a worthy, a worthy successor for the evolution of our species. That's something that should have died out a long time ago. Because they're leeches, they're parasites, they feed off us. They're not self-sustaining. And that's what anything should be, is self-sustaining. Any life in this world should be able to sustain itself. Because otherwise, what is it going to do? It's going to harm something else. Something else that could sustain itself. And could be something positive for our world. Because it's never anything good if something's just taken away and given nothing back. That's not going to serve anyone. But this is what narcissists do. They steal from you and they give nothing back in return because they're parasites. They're leeches, they're bottom feeders. They haven't got themselves together, they haven't got their lives sorted out. And then they come around you and they will take everything from you, mimic you. They feel entitled to your life, to everything that you are. And then they want to become you because they've got nothing of their own. They don't even know who they are. They lack a self-identity. All they've got is a mask, a false image. And they view you as an extension of themselves, so of course they feel entitled to you. They're not looking at it like you're something separate from them. And this is just how it is with people who are not even meant to be here, they're not even meant to survive. They have to view people as their possessions, as extensions of themselves. When that's just wrong, we should never see people that way. Even if you're in a relationship with someone, it should be two separate people. It shouldn't be something where you just feel entitled to them, their time, their money, their energy, whenever you feel like it, without giving them anything back in return. It should never be that way. A relationship is meant to benefit both parties involved. It's meant to make both people better by two people coming together. It's not meant to serve one person and then make the other person's life worse. That's not how a relationship is supposed to work. But when you're involved with a narcissist, that's how it's going to be.
Looks like this is where the cats like to lie down because it's quite hot out here. I actually saw a cat stuck up there the other day as well. On the roof. It was just walking back and forth. And then I came back here the next day, it was still there. I don't know if I ever got down. Because there's so many different cats around here. But it's sad, no one really seemed to care. This is just reality. Narcissistic people, they come around you because they can't sustain themselves. They're not able to take care of themselves. And it's not just something where, okay, maybe they had a bad start in life. They just need someone to bring them back to good health, to help them to get better. That's not gonna work. It's never going to be that way with them. With an empath maybe, but with someone who's narcissistic, they're never going to be able to sustain themselves. They're always going to be leeching off other people. This is why they're so envious and jealous. Because they can't make things happen for themselves. This is why they're always comparing themselves to other people. And they're always trying to bring you down, make you lose hope and belief in yourself. Because that's how it is for them. That's exactly how it is for them. And they want to make it that same way for you. But you just got to keep it moving. Keep your head up and don't give up. Don't let them bring you down. They will come around you and they will mimic you, copy you, because they're envious of you. They will try to steal your money, your possessions, because they view you as an extension of themselves, as this object that exists to serve them. So they will try to do these things to you. But what you just gotta do is remember who you are and continue to recreate yourself, continue to progress and advance, just become a newer version of you. But be aware that when you do that, they will come back. Because now you've got the new version, it's like they take bits and pieces from you because they want you to envy them so that they can feel like they're desirable. But then if you create a new version of yourself, they're not gonna feel like you envy them. So they're no longer gonna feel desirable to you. And that's when they need to come back to steal more parts of you. To then add to their false character in the hopes that you will then envy them again. And then they can feel like they're desirable. As crazy as it sounds, because it's like, they take bits and pieces from you. And then because they have a part of you, then it's like, oh, they're thinking you envy them. And that makes them desirable when it's like, no, you've just taken a part of me. It's got nothing to do with you at all. But because they have no core identity, no sense of self. And it's like, what other option do they have just to reflect on their lack of an inner sense of value? Well, they have nothing within. Of course, they're not gonna do that. So instead, all they're gonna do is come around you and take bits and pieces off you, steal your energy, and act like they're going off now and now they're the new you. And now you envy them, now they've got something that you want. It's how they've got to see it.
But as I said, everything is energy. Everything they envy, everything they want, everything they take. It all just comes down to your energy. The chosen ones, the empaths, we have the most beautiful, magical energy. They can only get that from us. We're so full of life, so enthusiastic, energetic. And they want some of that because just look at them. They're emotionally dead. They've got no life inside of them. They're like zombies. So of course they want to come around us and get some of that. Of course they want to take that from us. Because everything we have, everything we possess, it's all just our energy. And they want to take it and reciprocate nothing back to us because they have nothing to give anyway. That's where they come around us. They come around us to get it from us. But anyway, I think that's enough for this message today. If you found it helpful, hit that thumbs up button down below. Show your support, let's get it out there so that other people who are being harmed by narcissists will see it as well and it can benefit them. And also, you can donate to our community to support my work. Just go to my PayPal. It is paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can make a donation there no matter how small. I appreciate it. I appreciate all contributions to our community. So thank you in advance for those of you who do decide to donate through there. PayPal.me slash NarcSurvivor. And let me know what you think about this video. Let me know if you agree with it, if you disagree, or just any ideas that you have, whatever you think about it, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below. I read your comments every day. Hit subscribe and click all notifications so that you will be notified when I upload a new video or when I go live. And if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, just go to my website. It is narcsurvivor.co.uk. I am available for one-on-one -on -one coaching through Zoom. You could speak to me about your relationship with your narcissist, with the things that you've been going through, the things that you've been dealing with, with understanding your relationship, moving on, healing from it. Just book a session with me one-on-one. -on -one. Go to my website. It is narcsurvivor.co.uk. And also, follow me on Instagram. I'm uploading new pictures and videos of my travels every day on there. My Instagram is Narcsurvivor YouTube. Constantly new stuff on there every day. All right, that's this. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. And don't worry because I will be back very soon with another live video. And also there will be a video premiere in 12 hours. Thank you all for joining me on another Dark Survivor Live video. I do appreciate you all and I look forward to speaking with you in another live video very soon.